This is a story, a fairy tale, if you will, of three of the greatest foods in the world coming together. Butter, garlic, and bread. Okay, so today we are making garlic bread. If it's not uh, evident already, which I, it, it should be. It's a fairly simple thing. This has always had clout since it was invented. Do I know it was invented? Not really, let's look it up. There's very little history. There's literally one sentence. Garlic bread stems from bruschetta. I find it hard to believe that this is based off of bruschetta. The point is that garlic and butter already make sense together and bread also makes sense with those three ingredients. We combine them and make something greater than the sum of all of its parts. We're not just gonna stop with just a simple garlic bread. We have three for you. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Right, so to kick things off here, we're gonna start with a beautifully low effort garlic bread. Garlic bread in quotations, really. Anyway, snag yourself a solid loaf of bread or baguette, slice it into slices, or in this case, slice your baguette in half. Spread a generous amount of softened butter on each slice. Make sure to coat it edge to edge. Then press it into a cold pan, set it over medium heat, and let that bad boy toast. Obviously, if this is a slice of bread, you know, you're gonna butter the other side, unless you wanna upset papa. Once your bread is perfectly toasted, flip it and toast the other side, again, unless it's a baguette. Remove your toast from the pan and immediately cut a clove of garlic in half and rub the cut end all over the bread. The crustier the toast, the more garlicky it will be. This is sort of scenting the piece of bread. Trust me, it works. Then optionally, spread on some more butter, hit it with some flaky salt, and that's it. It's a low effort garlic bread. Now let's taste and see if this low effort toasty man actually tastes like garlic bread. So, this is for the people who want the low effort garlic bread. Now, it's not a traditional garlic bread, but nobody really talks about this, and I don't know why. It's toasted and it's scented. Now, this is why I usually make my own bread, because this bread kind of sucks. But, although this is low effort, you get a very sort of subdued garlic flavor, but in a good way. Almost scented with garlic. You take a little bite and the garlic's like, Oh my god, I just want to say I love you so much. And that's what the garlic says. Now, let's make the real stuff. Next up, we have the fan favorite, traditional, and simple, yet somehow perfect garlic bread. In a medium-sized bowl, add one cup or 220 grams of unsalted butter, softened, unless you want to have a bad time, four to six cloves of finely chopped garlic, a quarter cup of finely chopped parsley, that's Italian flat leaf parsley, all right? No, none of the curly stuff, that's just, nobody likes it. A quarter cup of grated Parmigiano-Reggiano, that's Parmigiano-Reggiano, not Parmesan, all right? The real deal stuff makes a huge difference. Anyway, mix all it together until thoroughly incorporated, and you've got your garlic butter. Now, all you need is, well, bread. For this one, I'd recommend a large loaf of ciabatta. Then all you have to do is cut that in half lengthwise, pop that bad boy open, then using a spatula, spread your butter on the cut sides of both pieces of bread. Make sure that you're coating this thing edge to edge. You may not use all of your butter, but you'll likely use the majority of it. If you have any leftovers, do yourself a favor and save it and finish it on some pasta or in some soup. Now place your buttered up bread on a foil lined baking sheet and go into the oven set to 400 Fahrenheit or 205 Celsius for about 10 to 12 minutes, or until it's lightly toasted and golden and the butter has soaked nicely into the bread. Pull it out, slice it into one inch chunky pieces like this, then serve it as is or hit it with some more parm, serve it with marinara, you know, it's all up to you. Now, just as the historians have said, let us put this in our mouth. We have our traditional garlic bread. Now, we've all seen this, it's in the restaurants, it's in the pretty pictures on Instagram. Uh, it's very basic, you know, it's butter, garlic, parsley, you put it on bread, you put the bread in the oven, it's as simple as that, without further ado. This might be the best garlic bread I've ever had. It actually tastes of garlic, it's rich, it's crunchy, and you've got that Parmesan cheese in the back that's like bah, bah, bah. We're not gonna end on some simple garlic bread. I think we can take this a little further, maybe a little bit more of like a fancy garlic bread. Okay, last but not least is a bit of a fancier version, garlic confit bread. So first thing, get a medium-sized sauce pot and add one cup or 220 grams of unsalted butter and 10 cloves of peeled garlic. Leave them whole, don't slice them. Set that over medium heat, let the butter melt completely, and then once the butter starts to lightly simmer, just let that cook for about 15 minutes, swirling occasionally, or until the garlic is very smooth and cooked through, and a little bit caramelized. And let that cool enough until it starts to become a paste. I like to stir it in a bowl set over an ice bath until it reaches that proper consistency. It's a faster way to get it to cool down than just letting it sit there, which is annoying. Remove your garlic, mash it up until it's a paste, then incorporate that back into the butter. Next, let's make our crispy prosciutto. Get three to four slices of prosciutto and ensure the deli person who slices it doesn't, you know, completely obliterate it like they did with mine here. It's whatever. Lightly oil a medium-sized nonstick skillet, add your prosciutto in one layer, set the heat to medium, and let those cook, flipping occasionally until browned and completely crisp. About two to four minutes. Drain those on paper towels, and once they've cooled completely, chop your prosciutto until you get a medium fine crumble like this. Then chop the leaves from 
one sprig of rosemary, nice and fine. Combine the two, place it in a bowl, and oh, don't forget to add an additional three tablespoons of finely chopped fresh Italian parsley. Toss that together and place to the side. Now to your confit garlic butter, add two cloves of finely chopped black garlic, half a tablespoon of Sichuan chili flakes, the zest of one lemon, one cup of grated Parmigiano Reggiano, and two tablespoons of good olive oil. This is actually a white truffle oil from the homies at Regalis Foods. That's not a sponsorship, by the way. They're just homies, and they send me this stuff, and they're good people. Hit that with a generous amount of salt and black pepper, then stir until thoroughly combined. Now this time we're gonna get a nice sourdough batard. This one is about 10 or so inches long. Cut that in half lengthwise, place it on a foil lined baking sheet, cut side down, and then into an oven set to 400 Fahrenheit or 205 Celsius for eight minutes. Take it out of the oven, flip it so the cut side is now facing up and let it cool for about two minutes. Then apply your confit garlic butter, spread it edge to edge over each piece, then give it a generous grating of some additional Parmigiano. Pop it under your broiler for two to four minutes or until melty and deeply browned. Pull it out, then let that cool slightly and top with your herby prosciutto mixture. Slice it into pieces and enjoy your fancy garlic bread with some nice jams, cured meat, or drizzle a balsamic. It's all up to you. You know, you got options. Now let's taste and compare this with the others. So this is a sourdough loaf of bread. This is a fatty. Look at it jiggle. This is no longer garlic bread. This is like ascended to something special. You serve this with a charcuterie board. You don't eat this by itself next to a crappy steak dinner. If we're comparing these two options to that of the, you know, low effort garlic bread, I think we have a clear winner. And honestly, to me, for nostalgia, for bonus points, for simplicity, for ease of use and deliciousness, it goes directly to the OG garlic bread. Now with that said, let's not eliminate our new guy on the block. This goes really well with something nicer. This is like, if you want garlic bread, but you want a more adult version. But whichever one you choose, whether it's the ultra easy, ultra classic, and the ultra fancified, you're gonna have garlic bread either way. And in my opinion, that's a win in any situation. You wanna know what else is soaked, hot, and packed with garlic? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made garlic bread three different ways. We had our ultra, ultra low effort version, which is barely garlic bread. We had our second classic one, and then our third, which is sort of like a fancy off the beaten path of garlic bread. One thing I would note about the third is, I think it might have even been better if I added a little bit of raw garlic to it as well. Either way, it was still delicious, and I bet it would have been wonderful with a little drizzle of aged balsamic on there, or some sort of uh, tartness to it. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you're eating more garlic bread because of it. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.